We're privileged to witness a baptism, uh, two of them this morning, uh, as, a, as a celebration. Just a couple words of explanation. Baptism is, at least water baptism here, does not save. Okay? Water baptism is a symbol. It's an outward sign of something that has already taken place inside. Something that God does in our lives when he opens our eyes to the beauties of Christ and draws us to him and gives us the faith to trust in him. And so um, Kim and Nancy Peck uh, have uh, shared with us that uh, they have already trusted in Christ and they want to uh, announce that and identify themselves with Christ and with the church uh, through baptism this morning. So let me ask if uh, Nancy and Kim would come and uh, I have asked if they would share their testimony with you. And so Nancy wanted to go first. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I normally wouldn't, didn't want to read uh, my testimony, but because of an older brain and nerves, I thought it might be best if I do it this way. So... I feel so blessed to be standing here in this place of worship in front of the friends that God has led me to and my beautiful family expressing my love for Jesus Christ. I was baptized as a child and raised Lutheran. I went to Sunday school almost every Sunday and attended confirmation classes. I'm sorry to say that those confirmation classes seemed like a chore to me and not the opportunity to learn about Jesus Christ. I was raised in a loving family, but my dad did not attend church with us. My family did not practice Christianity, so I didn't know the meaning of being a true Christian and accepting Jesus as my Savior. I've always believed in God, but did not have the close, loving relationship that I do now. We attended church periodically in our early years of marriage and frequently did not attend at all. It wasn't until I found myself feeling depressed and alone in my struggles that I knew I needed fellowship with other believers and to have a deep relationship with Christ. There was a big void in my life that needed to be filled. I needed help being a better mother and a better wife. I worked with Margie O'Donnell for several years and witnessed her close relationship with God. I spoke with her about which church she attended and listened to sermons on tape. We attended Sock Prairie Evangelical Free Church approximately 10 years ago for the first time and felt such a warm reception by so many people. I cannot give you an exact time that I accepted Jesus as my Savior, but, it was, but I know it was in the first year of attending church that I accepted and felt like a true Christian. There have been so many wonderful mentors since starting at this church who have brought me deeper in the word. I'm so grateful for the friends I have met in small group, in Sunday school, and Awana that have walked along beside me and taught me how to love Jesus and spread his word to others. I feel so much more at peace now than before my walk with God. I still have struggles, I still have turmoils and worries in my life at times. The thing that helps me the most is to stop, pray, and ask myself, is this what God would want of me? I need to turn my worries over to him. I am not perfect and never will be, but God loves me despite my flaws and imperfections. He loved me at my lowest point and rescued me from myself. It's not easy, but through Christ, everything is possible. I realize that I need saving from sin and require God's grace. I want to go under the water today in baptism as a symbol of dying to my old way of life and coming out to a new way of life. I am glad my family is here to witness my baptism and hope they know how much I love them and that they can feel the presence of Jesus in their lives. I want to read from Romans 6, 1-4 which talks about sanctification, the change God makes in our lives. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. I give all the glory to God and thank him for sending his son Jesus to die for me on the cross. you share with us as well about uh, your own testimony? 
feel like I should lower this a little bit. You can. That's all right. For most of my adult life, I knew I was blessed. And Nancy and I both had good jobs. We had a nice home, family, and friends. Without a college education, I was able to move up with my company and benefit from the things that come with more responsibility. There is an old saying, the more you make, the more you spend. That's true. We were able to buy things, and then those things led to more things. Looking back, I realize how much of my life has been spent pursuing things and not being the husband, the father, and friend I should have been. These things often left me feeling guilty, empty, and undeserving. There was a void, and I did not know why. I felt a need to give back, to serve, just not sure how. God began working on our hearts, Nancy and I. We both felt a need to attend church. We attended St. John's, and it simply did not register with me. So much I didn't understand. We switched to Sauk Prairie Evangelical Church, and we felt an instant connection and acceptance. We had an interim pastor at the time, and his sermons intrigued me. Then he said something that made the light come on. Have you ever wondered why you were so blessed to be born in this country? I don't know why this struck such a chord with me, but I started to think maybe it's not all fate or hard work. Maybe there is a higher power working in my life. From that point, God poured it on. He knew that he finally had my attention. Now when I look back, it becomes obvious how hard he was working on my heart and my mind. This church that he brought us to was certainly no accident. But God knew what we needed, and he put his plan into action. I stated earlier that I knew I was blessed, but the things I owned or purchased still left me feeling empty and undeserving. I still felt the need to give back. This church that God brought us to presented me with the opportunity to not only give back, but God also surrounded me by Christian men and women to encourage me. That chance to give back was a mission trip to Guatemala. Wow, maybe someone is finally leading me. The Guatemala experience only helped me fill a void in my heart. It was also bringing me closer to a relationship with our Lord and Savior. I can't tell you the exact date and time that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but it started with that trip. God knew that I would need the support and guidance from lots of wonderful Christian people. The people, this church body, is one more reason I know this church was no accident. Dick and Joyce Kesnick showed me what a life of service looks like. They are both so amazing. Denny and Sarah Moore bought Nancy and I our first, not our first Bible, but our first study guide Bible that helped us better understand God's Word. Denny also taught me it was okay to give a guy a hug. <laughs> Mike Wood has been a wonderful mentor and cherished friend. Mike has challenged me from time to time to help me grow in my faith. Kind of upset me once in a while with that one, but it was good for me. And has always been a source of encouragement. Our small group has been such a source of Christian growth for me and Nancy, and friendships that will treasure forever. God made Feed My Starving Children another opportunity to serve. I pray that God will continue to make this a passion in our life. When I reflect on the change God has made in my life, I'm so grateful. I pray that my family has seen the change in me and notice the joy that knowing Jesus can bring to your life. Amen. Well, Nancy, I'm going to go ladies first here. Nancy, uh, you've testified that uh, you have trusted in Christ, and uh, um, by that, let's just clarify, Nancy, do you believe that Jesus Christ came, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, paying the consequences for your sin, you have placed your trust in Him and what He has done? And then he rose again from the dead for your justification. Do you have believed in that? Great. Well, based on your profession of faith, Nancy, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
two over there. So. <laughs> Kim, I don't want to go in with you, buddy. <laughs> That's reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, have you come to the point where you have trusted Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Um, do you believe that Christ rose again from the grave? Yes. Yeah. And uh, do you understand that being baptized in water today does not add to or make any more certain um, your salvation, the certainty that you will be with God uh, in heaven? But, yes. Yeah. Well then, Kim, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.